Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video on the channel. So with today's video, we're going to be kind of switching things up a little bit. It's not going to be so much of the typical action sports type thing that you're used to seeing on the channel. As you guys know, we've been posting for about a year now. And if you've been, any of you guys that have been subscribed for a while and kind of watching the videos and keeping up on what's going on. So through all that, I've learned quite a bit on what works, what doesn't work, on different pieces of equipment I needed to add. So I figured there's probably a lot of you guys watching the videos that are also kind of interested in this type of stuff, maybe looking to start your own channel. So today we're gonna to go over the top 10 pieces of equipment and stuff that I think that every action YouTuber needs to have. So the single most important piece of equipment that any YouTuber, action YouTuber, whatever, is going to need is something that you guys are more than likely already have in your hands right now watching this, and that is your smartphone. That's what I started out my channel with. I do all my editing on it. It's just a basic iPhone X. I do all my editing, a lot of my recording, and all my uploading just off that iPhone. I want to get into using a computer, but I, it's, it's kind of a build-in process. I'm actually building my own with how the prices have been with graphics cards and everything. It's been kind of a slow process getting that all put together, but I would definitely recommend moving into that eventually. But as far as starting out, I would say your single most important piece of equipment is going to be the smartphone that you've probably got in your hands right now. That's going to be basically the backbone of your entire channel, and you're going to be able to do pretty much anything you need to do with that. So the second piece of equipment that any action YouTuber is going to need is going to be some type of action camera. Yes, your smartphone can do a lot, but it's going to be extremely difficult to video yourself while, or video footage that you're trying to get while you're out on a snow machine, on a four-wheeler, anything like that. It's going to be pretty much impossible to video with a smartphone. So what I would recommend starting out with is a GoPro. There are lots of different manufacturers. I know DJI makes a action camera. I'm sure there's some other people that do as well. GoPro has got a great reputation. In my opinion, that is definitely the go-to camera. I would recommend going with an 8 or up. I believe 8 is when they got toward having the entire camera itself being waterproof and you didn't have to use that bulky plastic clear case that was such a pain. So the one that I use is a 9. And I, the other thing I like about the newer ones is it's got really good stability. So that's something I would probably go with is a 9 or even a 10. That would be my first camera aside from your smartphone that I would venture out into getting. And with that, I would definitely recommend getting spare batteries, at least one or two, because they don't last the longest, and especially if you're in colder weather, they are going to die pretty quickly. Now, a lot of people that have watched the channel know that I got a GoPro Max, which is their 360 camera. And I would say it's kind of a toss-up for me. This one is... From what I've had put it through so far, it's been a super robust camera. And the GoPro Max will actually do pretty much everything that this one will do. You can put it in hero mode or else also the 360 mode. I think the downside for the Max is as far as I know, they've got these lenses here. And from what I know so far anyway, those aren't really replaceable. Your whole camera is basically, basically ruined and you've got to get a new one in order to replace those lenses. They have those clear fisheye bubbles that go over it, and those are the protectors, which I think makes the ends up making the camera quality pretty bad. So that is one thing I would give the regular heroes, is they got these replaceable lens covers, and that's a huge plus to me, because if you're going to be doing a lot of like riding and stuff where it's going to get smacked, you're going to want something that's replaceable and a little more robust. But I would say, I would definitely put this on the list. It just probably wouldn't be in my top 10 of things that you absolutely need to have. With that being said though guys, the number three item on my list is going to be a second action camera. So whether that is another GoPro or another GoPro Hero or the GoPro Max, whatever you choose, I do think it's not necessarily critical to have a second one, but it is going to make things a lot easier on you. So when I finally realized that, that's why I decided to go with the Max, is because that way I had another method of getting 360 video instead of just having the standard hero mode. But then again, I could go to just the hero mode if I wanted to. So number three is going to be a second camera. Now number four on the list is going to be mounts and ways to attach the GoPros or your action camera to whatever you're riding, to yourself, 
and be able to actually get some good quality footage. So I, when I went out and I had my GoPros, I just bought a, this is just a box that I had an old, old, really cheap action camera in. But I've got all kinds of mounts in here, just sticky pads, I can mount the helmets to anywhere on my machines, whatever, and I can get pretty good footage. So something that I noticed, that's what I initially started out doing, was just all with basically having the GoPros attached to whatever I happened to be riding at the time. And that was all well and good, but what I found is it was hard to get footage like on the sides around, like you're limited to wherever your camera is facing, which most of the time I had, like if you watch some of the earlier jet ski videos, I had my GoPros just mounted to the hood of the jet ski, just facing straight forward. And that was all you saw the entire time. And to me, from what I've noticed, just looking at it from a viewer's perspective, that's not nearly as engaging as how I found now. So what I ended up using, but what I used next was actually a head mounted for my GoPro. And that worked, it, uh, it got some decent footage, but I kept finding out that I was having a horrible time getting good angles with like actually people being able to see what the machine was doing. I could never get it like turned just right to where you could see what the machine was doing and then also be able to see everything out around you. I always ended up where I was just getting, like when I was riding the jet ski, I'd just see all the water, the tree line, everything else. You couldn't see the machine and it just, it wasn't very engaging footage. And then the other thing with the head mount is I found myself, I mean, I'd be constantly turning my head to look at things and it just constantly throws the viewer all over the place. Like you're not able to actually really see what's going on. You're just, you're just kind of thrown like, you'll be like, oh, we're looking at this. And the next thing you know, you're over there and you wonder what was still happening over there. It's just, it's, it's really hard to keep the viewer engaged. I feel like with that. So what I ended up moving to is a chest mount. You basically, this goes over your shoulders and you just wear it right here on your chest. So that's what I'm starting to move toward a lot with a lot of my newer videos. If you watched the last jet ski video, you'll see that. It, to me, it was a lot more engaging. You could see what I was doing and just kind of see the rider position and everything. And you still got to see what was happening in the water. So I'm really liking the chest mount. That's something that I would definitely recommend. Obviously, like I was saying, all your other mounts that go on the machine. And then this would be my top one for actually putting on yourself for getting good footage. That's not to say that you shouldn't get the head mounted one because I can see where there are some situations where you might want to, like if you're working on something and you need to like look at it with your head, that's one case where I will still use the head mount, but I would say for the most part, you're going to want something like the chest mount. If you're only going to buy one, buy the chest mount. So number five on my list is going to be editing software. So you're gonna want something that's pretty easy to work with. So in my case, I have an iPhone, which has iMovie, and that's actually been super useful and for being a free tool that just comes with the phone, I mean, it's been super great for me. It's not 100% ideal, but I've found that I've been able to do most things that I've wanted to, not really. I mean, there's a lot of more fine tuning that you cannot do with iMovie and you just never will be able to. It just doesn't have the capabilities. But for getting started out, it works perfectly fine. As far as Android goes, not sure what you guys have for options as far as that goes from a factory standpoint on the phone already installed, but I'm sure it's got something that's along those lines and works pretty well also. Now, if you are editing on a PC, I would probably recommend Adobe Premiere Pro or Premiere Plus, whichever one it is. That is a really good editing software. That whole thing is pretty nice on how it works. The only downside is it's got a subscription, a lot of fees there. So what I actually have installed on my computer that I built is called DaVinci Resolve. It's apparently what a lot of like higher end people use in film producing. And it's actually free for like the average person to use. If uh, you're using it professionally, it does go up into a paid version. But either way, it has, from my understanding, has every bit of capability as the Adobe series, except it's just a little, takes a little bit more of a learning curve to get used to it and learn how everything works with it. But to me that's worth it is because it's not a subscription based one like Adobe, which I really don't like. I wish they would actually make it where people could just purchase it outright. I will say though that DaVinci Resolve does require quite a bit of computer capabilities. And so far mine, my graphics card, just my GPU is not up to par for that. So until I get a new one, that's just what I'm going to keep using is iMovie. So for number five, yeah guys, you gotta have some good editing software. With number six, kind of along those lines, 
you need to have something, and this is just my personal preference, but I think you need to have something where you can get good sound effects and also tracks to go along that aren't gonna be, you're not gonna get hit with copyright infringements right off. So what I chose to go with was Epidemic Sounds. I believe they're like $11 a month, something around there. But you can basically get any type of track that you want, as well as tons of sound effects. I've never been flagged once for a copyright infringement. And it takes a lot of playing around with figuring out what you want to use for your videos, but that's part of the fun of it. So that would be my number six item, is get some type of service like that where you can get tons of copyright free music. So number seven on my list is going to be tripods. So you're gonna need some type of tripod, selfie stick, whatever you wanna call it. So I've got this one. This is the one that I started out with. You know, I didn't start out with, I got fairly recently. And this one actually is pretty nice because you can use it as a selfie stick. It also has a tripod mount that can screw into here into the bottom so you can actually use it as a tripod. But the main thing I got it for is to go with this gecko mount so I can basically put it on the rear window of my car. I also tried it on the side of my jet ski. It wasn't necessarily the mount's fault, but just with how much spray that jet ski threw up in the rear, it was constantly soaking that 360 camera. So it didn't really turn out quite like I hoped it would, but I would say you definitely need to have some type of tripod. I'm also using one right now with my iPhone to record this whole video. And that was just like a cheap one as you can see here, it's just a, like a $40 Walmart special, and it works perfectly fine. You can definitely go with something higher quality. That's just what I ended up going with. So for number eight, I'm going to go ahead and say that my pick for that would probably be a light, some type of lighting, and then a microphone. So for what I mean by lighting is something that you can put to kind of illuminate your face. If you don't have like a good light in your shop or whatever area you're working, that way you can kind of illuminate everything. I noticed in a lot of my videos where I was doing filming out here or whatnot, uh, my whole face looked super dark. Whatever I was trying to video looked dark. So you need to have some type of lighting for that. That's one nice thing about the GoPros, going back to that, where they have tons of modularity. You can get lighting attachments for those, which is super nice. You can also get a microphone attachment for them, which I also find nice. So what I'm actually using right now which I don't know if I'm impressed with it or not, is just another cheap Walmart. As you can see here, just something cheap from Walmart. Um, it's kind of a little kit that has a microphone and a light that you kind of put on with your smartphone. And I guess it's better than nothing, but I don't know that I would necessarily say to go that route if you're on a budget. Maybe this is something for you. But if you are actually trying to get something that's going to last, I'd probably say to try to find something a little more higher quality. So my number nine pick is going to be some type of camera bag. I don't know if you even want to call it a camera bag, but just something that you can put all of your mounts, your GoPros, whatever cameras you've got, all of your equipment into one bag. That way, as soon as you need to go do some filming or whatever, you can grab your whole bag, everything's all in there, and you just go. Something else you could use would be a Pelican case, but you just need something that's going to be able to hold all your stuff. This is not ideal for me. It's just kind of what I had laying around. It was an old laptop bag that I had and it has lots of compartments in it. So I found that it works pretty well for putting all of my gear into, but I definitely want to upgrade at some point. I'm just kind of throwing that in there. You guys will want something like that to keep all your stuff together. Otherwise, what I was finding before I did that is I would have mounts just strewn all over the place and I'd be trying to go out and do some filming and I was like, oh man, where's my head mount? Where's my chest mount? And couldn't find anything. So it really helps to have all that put together in one place. So the number 10 item for me, I almost hesitated to put on this list because I don't think it's exactly critical to get your channel started, but I do think it will help you out a lot. And that is obviously a drone. So the reason I don't think it's necessary really is, I mean, you can get a lot of footage perfectly fine with GoPros. You can have one facing forward off your chest, have another one mounted somewhere on the front of the machine pointing back at you, behind you, use it as 360 mode, whatever you want to do, and you can still get a lot of footage. I do think to take your videos to kind of the next level, you do need a drone because you can get some footage that you are absolutely not going to be able to get any other way besides having a drone. Now, as far as the drones themselves go, I do have a Skydio 2 Plus, as you guys have seen if you've watched the previous videos. I don't think this is necessarily the drone that you have to have. I think that kind of depends on to how, kind of what you're working with. So, 
if you've got somebody else that's kind of with you and filming all the time or whatever, you can probably get away with something like a DJI that's them flying perfectly fine. And they do have pretty good obstacle avoidance. I just don't think they have the best from what I've seen. I think Skydio kind of has it there. So I think if you're doing solo filming, this is probably the one to get. If you're doing, have somebody kind of dedicated camera crew, probably a DJI is the one to get. In my case though, like I was saying, everybody I ride with, they're all wanting to ride, do their own thing, and so am I. We're not really wanting to stop and do a ton of filming, so it kind of helps to have something that just flies along and follows you. So yeah, with number 10 on my list, I am going to go ahead and say that a drone is pretty useful, but I do think that would be one of the last things. If I had to grab everything on this list, that would probably be the last thing that I would go to get. I definitely would not get it first because it's going to limit you with a lot of things that the GoPros can do, and this is not going to be able to do. So I would definitely say it's probably going to be the last thing on the list I would grab. So yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up my top 10 things for what I think that every YouTuber needs to really get their channel off the ground and going. So I'm sure there's a lot of things that I probably missed. So hopefully you guys can help me out, throw them down in the comments. That'll even help me out because... I'll be able to see other ways that I can continue to improve the channel, as well as help out everybody else that might also be looking to get going. So hopefully you guys got something out of the video. If you did, make sure to throw a like on it. That really helps me out. It helps get the whole channel moving forward with the algorithm. So appreciate everybody that's been watching the channel, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.